let's see here. Have you ever wondered how many add-ons are out there? And even within Blender itself, how to tell which add-on is actually good and helps our workflow? I have seen a lot of those 72 free add-ons that will change your modeling type videos. I wanted to find out if it actually does. So I decided to start the series where I will test out different add-ons to see if they actually do help the workflow. This series will be an ongoing library of knowledge that I hope to expand over time. Leave a comment what is your favorite add-on. I got this idea doing a little bit of a YouTube research. I usually get very overwhelmed by all the add-ons that are out there. Even the ones that are bundled with Blender. Why not take time, review all these add-ons and find what are the best ones that really helps your modeling workflow. I personally don't use a lot of add-ons. I like to keep the software lean to make it more efficient. Loads of add-ons will slow down Blender software. For these videos, I have set out a certain rules to follow the structure. I want to look at the defined use of the add-on, the way the developer has intended this add-on to be used. Then test out the add-on. There will be a few categories that I want to look at. First, how easy it is to install? Is it not too complicated? Is it overall user-friendly? Is it easy to understand how to use it? It doesn't cause too much friction. It's not hidden somewhere in a weird places. Is the function of add-on worth it? Does this add-on help your workflow or does it hinder you and actually just slows down your process? And I will give an overall rating, taking all these categories together. So now that I have given all the explanations and all the disclaimers, let's get into our first add-on review. And today we will be looking at Globe Tools. Looking at the, the definition on Blender Docs is that it's a mesh modeling toolkit and contains multiple tools and that it is already included in Blender. As this add-on is already included in Blender, installation will be pretty simple. Go to Edit tab, go down to Preferences and here is all our add-ons that are already included in Blender. And as you can see, there's loads of them. Some of them are enabled already and some of them are not. To find all tools, go to search. You can look at drop down menu and it says in the in the description mesh modeling toolkit, several tools to aid modeling. It also says where we find it, tab category edit. We will be finding it in our object edit mode. Now I am going to close this. And now when I closed preferences, the loot tools are enabled. So installation process is 10 out of 10. It's pretty easy. You just need to enable it. Let's move to the next category. If it's user friendly, because I personally have used this add-on pretty much since the beginning of my Blender adventures. I know where it's located. We need to select our object that we want to edit. Press tab to go into edit mode. And if you press your right click of the mouse, you find loop tools sitting at the very top of the menu. It is pretty easy to find. The other place where you can find it is if you press N, it opens this like, sidebar. If you press on this edit, what it said in the preferences, you find loop tools also here. So drop down menu and here are all our functions that this add-on does. Let's start by testing out all the functions. One of the things that is pretty indicative to the name, it is used mainly on loops. What are the loops? Loops are, if you press Ctrl R, these cuts that go all across the geometry. That is a loop. If you scroll your mouse wheel, you can add more loops in the same go. I will add five. And you can change that here as well if you want to add more or less. I will stick with five and do the same in all directions. I will now prepare a file where we can see test cubes, where we can test these out. So we have a test samples, 
So let's start with the first one. It's called Bridge. So what this add-on does is essentially bridge the geometry between two loops. So if we delete these faces and take this top part, bring it for instance up, and rotate a little bit. So we have a hole between these two loops. So if I now go right click, go to loop plus and go to bridge, what it does, it bridges them, creates a geometry in between them. I can add multiple segments to make sure its flow is better. I tend to leave that the geometry is somewhat squares rather than stretched out. This is one way to use it. The other thing that we can do is let's switch to our face selection mode. We we'll take out these faces at the top and we'll take these central faces out at the bottom as well. I am selecting again that loop here and a loop on the top. We go to right click, loop tools and bridge. I think it's miss missing that. There we go. So we can create also holes through the object without doing the um, F, like filling in faces separately. This is our first add on function. I think it's pretty good. I have been using this function quite a lot myself. It creates much quicker workflow doing all these, like if you have to cut through, instead of using F to fill in faces. So let's move on to the next one. And the next function is circle. This is actually the function what made me to enable this add-on. We have this very square geometry, but we need to combine a circle with a cube. So I'm going to go to Faces and select these 4x4 four four faces on top. And I'm now going to, so you can see here, it's our circle. If I click on it or do right click circle, it's going to do the function. So as you can see, it takes those square faces and distribute them into a circle like the faces that we have now distributed in a circle shape. So if we extrude it, we have those two shapes combined in the same wire mesh. Moving on to the next one is curve. And what this curve does? Let's get into the add-on. So we have now our curve. I kind of want to select like this loop here. Unfortunately, it understands loop as in all the way around the object. But this counts as loop as well. Select just the central sort of part and press curve. What it does around sort of relaxes, like makes the rest of the geometry sort of curve in, if I take for instance these four as well, I create this loop and I'll press curve, stand it in both ways, it rounds out geometry, like cubic but does it like more shape, and linear, linear is the one that does it in a straight section. So this is the curve modifier. So the next option we have is flatten. This one is quite interesting. I tried this out the other day. So we have our cube. For instance, I want to almost make like a corner that is like pressed, pressed like straight, sort of like a middle 
middle calculation between all three orientations. So now I'm gonna go to faces, select these, let's go to flatten, okay, press flatten. Doesn't look like it did like it did much, but what it did actually just flattened all these shapes that were in three different orientations. If we go to view and now flatten, it corresponds to your viewport. It like really distorts it. I find normal is like probably the best use for this stuff. For instance, if we wanted to be like a chamfered edge, you can do that. It does distort it a little bit up. But leave a comment if you know where this function could be used. The next function of the add-on is G-Stretch. And this one is, I find quite tricky for the user. So G-Stretch. This one took me a little bit of time to figure out. It's not as intuitive as some of them. Let's take this loop. I'm going to go to Use Guides and enable Annotation as my Use Guide. So I'm taking Annotate Pencil now, draw like a stroke. Now if I press G Stretch, it sort of follows that line that I have drawn. Let me select this line because I took like a loop that is circular, like try to stretch to the points on the annotation line. So if I take just a line in the middle and press G stretch, what it does it sort of stretch those selected points to the annotation line. It probably could be really good for like following a reference image and drawing a, like a profile of a thing. Then the next function that we have is love. Love is pretty easy to use. It's very similar to bridge. I would say pretty much the same function. I guess bridge is more used to create like holes inside. Again, let's delete the faces. Let's go up. the strength because it sort of creates more fluid shape so I think that's that's pretty good so it's like almost like what we did with the bridge pretty much the same function I would say the next one is relax let's see it's like like a loop around the cube like this relax it basically takes the, the very sharp corners and just sort of smooth them out. Oh, and we have also iterations. If I go to 25, it's almost... Well, it creates essentially a circle. Relax sort of is, yeah, like a smoothing out all the sharp edges. Yeah, that's our <laughs> relax shape. And the last one, we have space. So what it essentially does, it's, it spreads vertices evenly, like in an even distance between. So I 
take this one. Let's do more like a almost damage, I guess. Um, so this is now like sort of, it's not spaced out even in these vertices. So if I go to space, it attempts to do this in the front goal. So if you keep pressing, it allows you to even the distance out between all those points evenly. It's not the most straightforward function, I would say. I can see that it could be a useful thing for sort of fixing geometry or something. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the most most easy to use. So, with the ratings for each function, so we can take the average bridge function, I would say 10 out of 10. It's pretty good, pretty easy to use. I think it does speed up the workflow quite, quite well. Next, circle as well, I would say 10 out of 10. Super easy to use. Understand what the function does, does improve the workflow massively. Next, curve. I haven't used it that much, but I can see how it's almost like a, like it works almost like a local subdivision without subdividing the geometry, if that makes sense. So I will give this um, seven. It's good. It's a good function, but I wouldn't say it's essential in in my opinion this is all just my opinion flatten i don't use it that much but i can see how this could be speeding up your workflow so i would say say seven as well g stretch i think it's definitely not the most easiest to use in the sense of user friendliness, it's not the most easy to use function. Good. So I will give this, I would say six. And the reason why I'm giving it less is only because it is not really user friendly. It's not as intuitive as I thought it would be. The next one, loft. The kind of fine loft is almost like an overkill to bridge. So I will, I will give it a give it an eight because it is good. It is very intuitively to use, but it is essentially an overkill to bridge. Relax function I think is quite good. Like what comes to my mind is to use it as a well, situations where you want to cinch a geometry in, and I think the idea of iterations like how much cinched like relaxed geometry you want. So I will give it um I'll give it an eight as well. I think it's quite good. Space mm. it's quite user unfriendly to understand as well. So I think I will give six as well. So now what is the average of all these? Let's do a max. So 10 plus 10 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6 plus 8 plus 8 plus 6. So the sum is 62 divided by 8. The overall rating for this I would give 7.75. Overall, I think like this add on is worth having, it is worth using certain functions of this in your workflow. Circle, bridge, well, loft, which is an overkill bridge. These three, I, well, I use it quite often in my, in my modeling workflow. So I'm, those three functions are, I'd say, quite a lot of time. So those pretty much carries <laughs> Aries, this add-on. So let's get overall rating for this add-on. Installation is pretty simple. Well, you just need to enable it. 
So it's 10 out of 10. I think it can be more easier than that. From user friendliness, I give it an 8. Might be a little bit difficult to find at the beginning. But overall, it's quite simple add-on. There's not much of friction to use it, so I think 8 is popular. And in terms of functionality, I gave 7.75. The reason is some of the functions are more useful than others. So those are our numbers. Let's do our average rating for this add-on. 25.75 divided by 3 is 8.58. I will round it to 8.6. So that's our overall rating for this add-on. We have our test. Let's do a demo where I use as much of these functions as possible.
This is just a little demo where we used six out of eight functions of the, of the add-on. And I think some of the functions are a little bit overkill to others. But overall, I think it's quite a good add-on. It does improve your workflow quite a lot, especially the circle and the bridge function. So this is our first review. Leave a comment. I'm going to start reviewing other add-ons that are there. But in the meantime, subscribe to my channel. Comment what is your favorite add-on and you can't live without. Like this video to reach more people. And on that note, have a good day.